this video we're going to create code in Excel VBA that allows us to save a copy of a file where the file name is dynamically the previous month end date of whatever month we're in now. So currently the date is August 1st 2021 and our objective is to make a copy of the file you see here and save it where part of the file name is the previous month end date July 31st. So you can see I have a data set of orders over here to the left. I have a summary that summarizes our orders by month and then branch location. And I can select different locations from this drop down menu to change the branch and the order totals. So the first thing we want to do is hit the keyboard shortcut Alt F11 to go into the VBA editor window. I'm going to right click anywhere in this project window, go to insert and then module. We'll call this subroutine date file and begin with declaring some variables. Our first variable is going to be called WB for workbook. It's going to be as the data type workbook. This represents the workbook we're in right now. I'm going to add a, another variable called worksheet. That's going to be as the data type worksheet. And that is going to represent the worksheet that we're currently on, which you can see down here is called summary. We're going to have another variable called path. And that's going to be as the data type string because that represents the path where we want to save the copy of this file to. We're going to have a, another variable called my date. That's going to represent the previous month end date. And although this is a date and there is a date data type, we need to make sure this data type is a string because file names and file paths are strings. So we have to use the data type string in this case. So we have another variable called file name and that is going to represent our complete file name because our file name is actually going to be a combination of this my date variable along with the branch value in cell F2. So we're going to combine those two together to get a file name. So finally we're going to have a another new workbook and new worksheet variable. So I'm just going to copy that and put in in front of that for new. That will represent the copy that we create. So the first thing we want to do is set up our object variables for the workbook we're in now. So that begins with the keyword set and then our workbook is going to be equal to this workbook and then we're going to set our worksheet and that's going to be equal to the workbook we're in now and then worksheets and the name of our sheet is called summary. So now we'll go ahead and define the path variable where we want to save this file, the copy of the file to. So that is going to be equal to the folder here we want to save it to, which you can see this is what we're going to output eventually a file like this that says branch one and the previous month in. So I'm going to copy this path and this is a string so it needs to be enclosed in double quotes and very important we're going to concatenate our file name variable to the end of this path variable eventually so we need another backslash on the end because that needs to separate that path from our file name and file extension but we'll get to that here shortly so now I want to define our my date variable and this is going to be equal to a method called date serial and this has three inputs year month and day so for our first input the year we're going to use the year function and within that function we're going to insert the now function. The now function will return the current date which is August 1st 2021 and then the year function will extract just the year 
from that, which is 2021. So we're going to do a similar thing for the month input. We're just going to input the month function and then the now function again, and that will extract the month August from the now function. Finally, we have day input, and typically that requires legitimate days in the month, which is one all the way to the last day of the month. But what we're going to input here is a value of zero, and what that will do is, since that's not a legitimate day of the month, it will force this to the last day of the previous month, which is July 31st. So that is how we dynamically get the last day of the month. So now we have our file name variable we want to define, and that is going to be equal to the value in cell F2. Whatever branch location is selected is the first part of that. So we're going to take our worksheet variable and then range F2 and we want to concatenate that to our my date variable. Now our my date variable needs to be formatted in date format, so we need to use the format function and put our my date variable in there. So we have two inputs really. We have an expression which is our my date variable and then the format we want it in. So we have four digit year, two digit month, and two digit day. So now we have another thing we need to add is the file extension. So we use another AND symbol to join that and we want XLSX. Now we probably want a space between our branch name and the date so we might add another and symbol here and include just double quotes with a space in between to add a space there. So now what we want to do is create a copy of the workbook we're in now and then paste values over these formulas here so that we have just a copy with hard numbers. So what I'm going to do is reference our worksheet variable and use the copy method. And if we just simply state copy and not define any of the parameters for copy, what this will do is create a copy of this worksheet to a new workbook, and that's what we want. This will become the active workbook, so from here what we're going to do is set our new workbook variable equal to the active workbook we're in now, which is that copy. And then we're going to set our new worksheet equal to our new workbook and worksheets summary. So now with our new worksheet, we're going to use a with statement to do multiple things here. We want to take all the cells on our worksheet and copy them. And then with those same cells, we want to paste special and then paste values. end our with statement and finally we want to save this file to that location so with our copy we're going to save it and what we want to do um, is also prevent that display alerts message from possibly popping up um, especially if there's already the same file name out there we we don't want that the alert that pops up that says do you want to save over this file because that will stop our code in its tracks so 
we're gonna use the application and then display alerts and we want to set that equal to false and then with our new workbook object we want to save as and we want our file name to be equal to our path which is our network path and then our file name variable we want to set the file format equal to Excel workbook default once we've saved it we want to close out that workbook and then set our display alerts back to true so I'm just gonna go ahead and run this all at once and what we should see is a branch to file with the date here in our network path so I'm gonna try and minimize this play and run this and when I go back to our path we have a copy of the branch 2 with the file date here on the end if I open this you can see we just have hard numbers here and a hard copy of that original file so that is how you can dynamically save a file with the file name that includes the prior month end date based on the current month. Hey, if you like what you saw today, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.